Then the rebellion wants more and more, more and more, more and more, raping, lying, murders, wars. We gave our authority over to the deceiver, which inadvertently made him become our leader. The curse sunk into the earth, now tsunamis and hurricanes, and we dare point our fingers at God when we're the ones to blame. God desired to be with us, and he would if he could, but his good light can't mix with the dark in us that's no good. So he raised up holy men, seeds of Abraham, with kings, priests, and prophets. He made a covenant that he would dwell with them if they would just deal with their sins, but the wages of sin is death, so they had to sacrifice many limbs, I mean lambs, sheep, bulls, and goats, but their sins were too many, their sacrifices gave no hope, no hope, but their only access to God was through a high priest, which made you knowing God personally was highly unlikely, your diseases and your curses would rule over you, no Holy Spirit to be your comforter in whatever you're going through, enslaved to your desires, no power to overcome your sinning, the opposite of Charlie Sheen, because we were so far from winning, but God... God and his genius had a contingency plan. He points in and said, I want you something like Uncle Sam. He said, your sin is too great for the sacrificing of goats. Your distress is too much. You need my spirit for your hope. Your authority has been stripped, and it needs to be reinstated. Your heart is black, twisted, enslaved. It needs to be emancipated. I'm proclamating you need a savior similar to you but sin-free, born of a virgin. All God was still able to bleed. He must know your weaknesses and temptations, but overcome them all. Understand why you stumble so he can free you from your fall. He must live perfect and holy in order to strip hell and death of their key, but, but none of your holy men can seem to cut it. So the sacrifice will have to be me, my son. See, our sin is so great that the sacrifice had to be a perfect God. For he so loved this twisted world, and, and I know that sounds odd. He knew our hate was so great that we would kill he who was loved. So I guess Simony, we caught him slipping and beat him like some thugs. Bruised his face for our iniquities, chastised him for our peace, gave him 39 whips in his back to match our 39 major diseases. Man, we mashed him up. So God's wrath and cup was poured on him for our sins like gravy. Blood, sweat, and tears filled his eyes at the mockers he was given. Amazing. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, translated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? His heartbeat was rushing, crying of thorns, giving him concussions, but little do we know for our sakes that pleased his father to crush him and he died. It baffles me how often Christians only mention that Jesus died. Because our Jesus proved he was God when he came back on the third like surprise. See, we praise him because he died, but we worship him because he rose. Any good man can die for a good cause, but only God comes back from death's blows now. Death knows that he can't stomach our God's blows. So we all have a choice to be hot or cold or be goggled and blown out by Jesus. Not Regis, but he's got me feeling like a millionaire. God died for his enemies just to make us his heir to his family. If you catch me stammering, I just may be at a loss for words. But my vocabulary won't stop my praise because that will be absurd. So help me jump, help me scream, help me clap, help me dance. This is the good news of the gospel. Death couldn't hold down Jesus, the son of man. Thank you all. Blessings. Come on, make, make a little more noise than that for Cyrus from ATL. Chicago Cubs just won the World Series. And uh, they went from a 108-year losing streak to finally getting it. 108 years. That's a long time. That's a long time. That's a little bit longer than some of us here. And when I thought of that number, the 108, and I thought of the Cubs winning after all that time of losing, I... It, what came to my mind was, how long is it going to take some of us to win? Like, how long is it going to take some of us to actually overcome? Because we've been losing far too long. We've been losing for far too long. We've been losing our passion. We've been losing our hope. We've been losing our joy. And all we've been doing is clinging on to the idea or the conception, the idea of the Christ, the Messiah, 
because it resonates with us. We were born in it. We do the things that a Christian should do, right? So we're just living that way where we're signing a, a punch card and saying, I'm going to church. This is me. I, 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 this is my Christian life. This is my Christian circle, my Christian bubble. But all the while, we're losing our hope. We're losing our faith. We're losing our power. And we're losing all of the benefits that God has promised us because we're living as losers. And people were Cubs fans even when they were losing. How many know that? Some of us here have been Cubs fans for as long as we can remember. We've just been supporting them. You go by Wrigley Field and everybody's packing out as much as, at, at least it looks like it. They're packing out the whole field because they're excited about the team that loses. <laughs> like, isn't that strange? Like, it's a losing team. Raiders are the same, but I heard Raiders are doing better now. Uh, you know, in Cali, it's a whole, they're, they're just excited over there about the Raiders. Uh, and they're excited about that. But you know what I believe is people gravitated toward this team because this team, this franchise, was something that we saw actually brought the city together. Even from the Sox side all the way to the Cubs side, people, if you were a Sox fan, you were somebody that would say, you know what, I've been downing the Cubs for quite some time, but props. Y'all good. Y'all okay. Y'all did it. Y'all ain't losers. Y'all can stand next to us because the Sox have won quite a, a couple times. Amen. But what the Cubs stood for was a team that would actually be something that people can gravitate toward and uh, they can literally say, I'm a fan and look at somebody else with a shirt and say, oh, he's a fan. And they had some similarities through that team. How many know what I'm talking about? And the old phrase, maybe next year has been wiped away, and it just happened. But when will that happen for you? When will you actually live as a winner? Like, when will you live as a winner? Because it's more than just a punch card of, I need to pray more, I need to read Bible more, right? If, if we passed out a punch card to you, and, and, and I would write on that punch card, you would see what is prohibiting you from growing in your faith. Oh, I'm not reading the Bible enough. I'm not praying enough. I'm not doing these things. Usually we correlate our relationship with Jesus as something we have to do. All of the elements of serving Jesus is, oh, I got to come to church early because that's serving. I need to move some chairs because this is my ministry. Hello. That's the way we, we, we have morphed into this way of thinking. But I'm here to tell you tonight it's more than just things that you check off. I believe what would cause your relationship with Jesus to expand to all new heights is the level of gratitude that you have. Your attitude, if left unchecked, would always be mad and rude. Hello. <laughs> let, me get, uh, let me get spoken word style on here. Your attitude, <laughs> if left unchecked, will always be mad and rude. <laughs> but see, I would go on to say this, that depending on your attitude, and how much thankfulness you have will depend in how, will, be, will, will change how you see your destiny and how you see your days. In other words, your attitude of gratitude will extend into your latitude. Hello, somebody. <laughs> and I believe a missing element to winning is our gratitude. Because gratitude, what it does is it changes the way that we see our situation. It changes the way that we see our lives. It changes the way that we see our future and our destiny. Gratitude. We don't think of that because so often we're living our lives in a way that says, I am God. I make my decisions. I make my choices. What feels right, I do. What doesn't feel right, I don't do. And for the religious, many of you say, I have to pray about it. Hello. Come on, how many religious folks we got here tonight? Come on, we got a few. Amen. But some of us, most of us maybe, just go on and do. We just do things. Whereas some would say, I need to fast before I do this. Come on, how many of you have ever been there? Oh, if it's a big decision, you got to make You can't just pray. You've got to fast. You've got to do something more and, and greater because you want to know something more and greater. How, how many Christians am I talking to here tonight? But see... Our purpose becomes clearer when our attitude is full of gratitude, yet we're continually walking in this place of 
being ungrateful. We're constantly walking in, a, in this, this life of this is what I do, this is who I am, the end. And the only time we thank Jesus is for, for our food. Hello. Come on, how many, how many prayer warriors, dinner time prayer warriors do we have here tonight? <laughs> Come on, that's the time that you pray, and then we got the bedtime prayer warriors. You know what I'm saying? I, I've heard that everywhere. I pray before I eat, before I go to bed. And that's cool, amen. You're doing something. You, you, you're trying your best. Praise God. Amen. But come on, how many know it doesn't just end there? It doesn't end there. That's just, that's just little pieces of it. Our relationship with Jesus will not grow, will not grow, will not expand, will not reach the depths of what God has desired for you if our attitude is continually not thankful in every way, shape, and form. Can we pray once more as the sound just works to the best of its ability tonight in Jesus' name? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, before anything is shared for the next few moments that we have together, I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit would open up our hearts, that you would continue to speak to us tonight and reveal to us what it is in our lives that are blocking us from living lives of gratitude. In Jesus' name, amen. See, our sinful nature blocks out gratitude, period. Our sinful nature, like what you were born with, like when you came out of your mama, hello somebody, you came out of your mama, eh, out, in, sin, hello. That's the way it works. You come out, you're in sin. How does a precious baby full of sin, how does this work? That's the case. In the book of Genesis, disobedience was now uh, something that was never around prior. But when the fruit was eaten, as Brother Cyrus was saying in his, in his spoken word, as Cyrus was saying it in his spoken word, that's what literally changed our relationship with Jesus. That sin now was etched into our hearts. How many know what I'm talking about? You don't got to teach a baby to lie. You don't got to teach a baby to steal. You don't got to teach a baby to sin. You've got to teach him to not do that. Amen? But our sinful nature blocks us from seeing the truth and the truth being that we are not the dictators of our lives and that everything that we have in our lives is not accredited to us and should never be. Amen. But we live in such a way that this is our life, this is what I do, these are my choices. However, I want to open up the book of Psalm 23, chapter 23 here. David is writing something to God, and I just want to share this really quickly because it's very interesting what David says and how he approaches God. He says this, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Now, what's awesome about Psalm 23 is this. David didn't say, I lie down in green pastures, I walk by the still waters. I lead myself into paths of righteousness. Look what he says. He points it to God throughout this chapter. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. He watches over me. He's taking care of me. A lot of us feel, especially as we grow up out of our teenage years that we've got to be independent and that's a good thing Amen. you don't want to live at home forever hello hello somebody and if you do live at home and you're way over than a teenager god bless you man <laughs> praise god but you know there's always a goal amen? amen there's always a goal no matter where we are no matter how old we are there's always a goal that we should want to achieve amen, amen. but look what david says he approaches god as a shepherd he approaches god in this chapter here in this in this poem, he's approaching him in this prayer.
He's approaching him as a son. He's approaching him as a son, and he's approaching him as a member of his flock. The Lord is my shepherd. And this is the amazing thing, is that David looks at God and says, he does this and he does this, right? So number one, according to David here, God can satisfy completely. He satisfies completely. Number two, he brings forth spiritual and natural rest. I'm going to go ahead and change my microphone here if that's okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Check, 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 one, two. Check, one, two. He can satisfy completely, number one. He brings full spiritual and natural rest. He leads you. Because someone say he leads you. He restores you. So what does that mean, he restores you? Well, he refills you when you've messed up. He restores you. When something's broken and vintage and old and you want to make it something new, you got to restore it. you gotta, you got to make it better. And it's worth more. Amen? So God saw you in your broken state, and God is the only one who can restore you. See, there's people that take shoes, old joints, that are all corroded and falling apart. Some of you probably do that as your side hustle. <laughs> some of your friends do that. And you get some J's that are worth maybe retail 280, 300. You buy a beat-up pair for about 50 or less. You paint it up, make it nice, and you sell it for more. God did that with you when you were busted down like an old Jordan. Isn't that awesome? Like we all came to, to the Lord like old Jordans that were busted. And God said, I'm going to make sure that you're worth a lot more than what you really are. Because I've called you into my shop. Amen? So he restores you. He leads you. He makes you holy because he's invested into you. You know what I'm doing? I'm paraphrasing the verse here. It says this here. It says that he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So when God leads us, he's leading us with his name attached to it. He's co-signing you when he's changing you, when he's working on you. He's co-signing you. He's saying, I did that. But we walk around like, where's God? Or we walk around like, God don't co-sign me. Or we walk around being a bad example of a co-sign. Hello, somebody. But even in all this, he satisfies completely. He brings full spiritual and natural rest. Hallelujah. Because sometimes we could get natural rest, but we need spiritual rest. We need, like, the rest to just, like, really rest in him. Like, to really know God's got us covered. Because you could go to sleep at night and still be worried when you wake up. Hello. But see, God restores you. He leads you, brings you full spiritual and natural rest. He makes you holy because he's invested into you. He's invested into you. You're the stock that he's invested into. He's put things into you. Hello. He's put gifts into you. So he wants you to be the best that you can be. But we're walking around like losers. We're walking around defeated. We're walking around in a place of 108 losing streak. 108 years. Just like, one day we'll make it, huh? One day I'll be out of this rut, Mom. No, one day I'll go ahead and get, uh, one day I'll read my Bible a little more. One day I'll pray a little more. Cheryl, hello, somebody. How many got wives named Cheryl? You never know. How many got wives? <laughs> Praise God. So he makes you holy. Isn't that awesome? He does it. He causes you to walk fearless. He causes you to walk fearlessly. He's the one. In other words, when you know that God's with you, you can walk like a big shot. But when you don't know that God walks with you, you'll always be down. You'll always be with your tail between your legs. But he's called you to be the head and not the tail. See, he's created all these great things for you. He has these things already stored up for you. And we're still with the loser mentality. We're just fighting through, trying. I keep sinning. I keep struggling. We're forgetting that Jesus is on the throne. And what he's done, he's done once and for all. And as he's on the throne, he's still praying for you more than you're praying to him. The spirit that he gives those who believe in him, that spirit is praying also. So there's this big prayer thing going on that's really what I believe is it's God's way of, first of all, loving you, protecting you, but it should inspire us all to be in sync with that. 
Because if we're not in sync with that, Jesus is praying for us, Holy Spirit's praying up, and, and we're there just in the crossfire, then anything could come from the left and right. We're not catching what God wants to do. So, so many of us don't know what we're going to do for our lives. So, I see a lot of young people. This is the first server we ever had with so many teenagers ever, and that's awesome. But a lot of y'all, if you're young in college or, or, or you're young in high school, wherever you are, maybe junior high, you're just a little, little older. I don't know, the guy with the white shirt, I know you're like about 40. I could tell. <laughs> But this is the thing, like sometimes we don't know what is in store for us, we, we can't tell, right, we're all scared, or we're like, we're like signing up for all these student loans, hello somebody, you don't want to do that by the way, <laughs> disclaimer, <laughs> but I believe that you can know where God has uh, you to walk when you actually are in sync with him as he's doing what he does in you, now, he takes care of you. He makes you holy. He causes you to walk fearless. He makes you also stand out. Let me tell you why I said he makes you stand out. Again, I'm doing this very briefly, but everything I'm saying here tonight goes with what we just read in Psalm 23. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies in Psalm 23, verse 5. You prepare a table. Let, let me say this. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. <laughs> How many got enemies here tonight? I mean, you got people that are against you, people hating on you, people that don't want to see you excel or succeed or prosper. You're lame, man. You're whack. You ain't Christian. You're fake. You ain't real. Come on. And that's the way they sell. You know that. <laughs> Even if they're a young girl, they sound exactly the same. That's the spirit behind it. That's the spirit voice. <laughs> You're never going to excel. She thinks she's Kylie Jenner trying to do it. She's trying to redeem the Jenners. <laughs> <laughs> but look what it says here. He says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That means God is like, yo, I've got you covered, and nobody could stand against you because when they do and when they finally realize it, they're going to feel so salty. They're going to feel Lot's wife salty. They're going to be drenched in salt because they're going to look at you and say, wait a minute. God was with him the whole time. God was with her the whole time. He prepares a table. He does it. We don't have to do it. We don't have to shout out what we're doing and, and how greater and how much better we are than somebody else. God sets the table before us. So in other words, he causes us to stand out. He's got us locked down, and he wants us to stand out, and he's got that covered. Because some will say, he's got that covered. <laughs> Look what else God does according to Psalm 23. He blesses you so that you can be a blessing. You anoint my head with oils. My cup overflows. You know, when your cup overflows and you've got anointing oil on you, that means you've got a little more anointing com coming off of you. Are you hearing me? So when God anoints you, God blesses you, when God says you're his, man, he fills you in a way that you can overflow, and you're supposed to affect everyone around you. That's the goodness of God, that he didn't just save you. He saved you so that you can be a blessing to others. So he had others in mind, even with you. And he loved you all the same. He blesses you so that you can be a blessing. And he makes goodness and mercy follow you. Hello, he makes goodness and You don't make goodness follow you as good as you look, or as good as you think you look, or as nice as you are. You don't make goodness follow you like God can make goodness follow you. You don't make mercy follow you like God can make mercy follow you. Come on, some of y'all been driving late one time and cops wanting to give tickets out. Hello, somebody. You know you were in the wrong, but all of a sudden the cop looked at you and said, all right, why don't you just get that fixed? Uh, I'll crumble up my ticket. <laughs> Come on, you're like, yo, the cop, the cop had officer on me, dude. No, it was God that had mercy on you because you did something dumb, but God said, I'm going to take care of him right now. The next time I might not so he can learn, hello, somebody, and I'll still be there with him in the jail cell and still be with him in court, but I want him to learn, amen, because the Bible says God disciplines those who he loves, but he also gives mercy when we don't even deserve it. That's the awesome thing about it. God brings us mercy, and he gives us mercy, and he pours out mercy upon us. And, man, we look at others, and we don't even have that same mercy coming out of us on them. We're like, they don't deserve it. Look at them. But you know if it was you, you would be rattling, your, you're shaking in your boots. You say, oh, man, why am I here? He 
he blesses you so that you can be a blessing. He makes goodness and mercy follow you. And look what it says at the end of Psalm 23, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Can someone say all? All, all the days of my life. And now look what it says after that. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. First of all, with all the perks that God is, that David is mentioning about God, I don't know about you, but it makes me want to dwell in the house of God forever. Because God is so good that I just want to chill. Come on. If somebody's been good, with, good to you, don't you just want to be their friend? <laughs> like if someone's been good to you, like a lot. Like, doesn't it make you feel good when you're hanging out with them? Because they make you feel good, and you're like, wow, this person looks out for me. Wow. Maybe for some of you young guys, somebody's buying you food all the time, and you take it for granted. Hello, somebody. We knew what that was like, man. We were youth pastors at one point. I'm preaching to somebody tonight. And I remember we took somebody out to dinner. Hello, somebody. And they ordered the biggest burger on the menu. <laughs> they didn't say a word. When it was time to pay, he looked to the side. We said, we said, wait a minute, you didn't bring money? He's just like, that's not what he was used to. He was used to big groups, the older person pays. <laughs> <laughs> After that, he didn't want to hang with us anymore because there was an issue with that. <laughs> but for those of y'all who keep paying for these young people, and for those of y'all who keep getting blessed, don't you want to keep hanging out and keep being around that party because you're getting hooked up? <laughs> Listen, when you're in a relationship with God, and you know who he is, and you're growing in knowledge of him, and your heart is continually being opened and matured and molded by him, then you just want to be where God is forever. And here in the scripture, David says, I want to dwell in the house of God forever. And you know, according to the New Testament, man, we see that the house of God are the people of God. The house of God is not necessarily made by man. But it's the people that represent who he is. And so I don't know about you, but without gratitude and my attitude lacking gratitude, then I'm living in a place of being self-centered, of being unsure of what's going to happen, of being fearful, of not having goodness and mercy all around me because I don't know for sure. Hello, are y'all getting what I'm saying? That means, see, David pointed to God for everything. David gave God the credit for all of the good things that were happening in his life. David gave God the credit. Because someone looked to your neighbor and said, David gave God the credit. But see, you know what happens? We get desensitized in school. We get desensitized at work. You get employee of the month because you've done a good job. Right? Right? When you, when you, when you graduate, you get a, you've been the, the, uh, you're the honor student. You're, you're so great. You're so precious in my classroom. You're just getting praised. You're like, yes, this is awesome. And don't get me wrong. God wants every intention and has every intention to honor you and bless you. But our focus right now as we live this life is being distracted and pulled away from continually living a life of gratitude because we think we are deserving of something that we're not. See, David pointed to God in every single circumstance. All the good things came from God. When it was a wrong thing, he knew God would have his back. Even when he was like, God, oh, I'm struggling, I'm going through this. But as you read on, you know that he st still looks to God as the strong tower. And he still resorts to saying, it's, I can do it through you, though, God, please. It's you. It's easy to take credit for everything around us. But David points to God as the main factor and the, the jewel of our gratitude. Our emphasis has been on ourselves and church, everyone in here tonight. I think one of the biggest things to cause you to grow, as I said earlier in the beginning, is that your gratitude level be raised up to another notch tonight. Where you're literally thanking God for everything around you. Because the enemy would want to seek to stop you from doing that. Because the moment you're not grateful for what God is doing, you put your eyes on yourself, your own situation, and then you wonder why you're lacking in your relationship with God. You're lacking in purity. You're lacking in all these things because you haven't been thanking God for everything. You haven't been giving God thanks for literally every little thing. 
By the grace of God, I've, I, I've literally morphed into a person that me and my wife, we're just thanking God for every single thing. Everything. We're just like, praise God for everything. And that was all, also an old school uh, kind of a Christian speech, right? Like you would just say praise God for every single thing. Like, I don't know, for anybody who, anyone who's been around church for a long time, I remember growing up with that, you know, hearing, praise the Lord, brother, praise God. You know, you're just saying, you know, hey, you know, I just made, I, I, I got here to church on time, the bus was on time, praise God. <laughs> Amen, but, but you in your mind are thinking, well, hey, I was late, I mean, but I guess I made it, cool. No, but what about when we, when we turn our thoughts and turn our heart to literally thanking and praising God for everything that happens around us. As, as Cyrus was saying in the story of Job, Job had all of the horrible things that you could ever imagine upon him and his own flesh. And he still praised God for it. His wife, people around him said, what are you doing? Why are you praising God? He ain't even coming through for you. He ain't even coming through for your mom, for your dad. Your parents died. Someone died of cancer. He didn't come through. This is what people are saying. But imagine if your outlook would change and say, you know what, that did happen, but God is still God and I trust him and I thank him because he knows more than I do. Amen. He knew better. So many times in the scriptures the Bible says, lean not, lean not on your own understanding. In the word, the Bible talks about us being clay, right? And like it literally says, who are you to question the potter? Who are you to say, God, why did this happen? It says that. So, so let me just tell you this. The Bible says a lot of crazy things. But I'm down with every single part of it. Because I know and I've seen and I've tasted that the Lord is good. And when you know that and when you taste that, you can't help but say, want a bite? Amen. You can't help but say, you need to try this. This is good. Come on, we eat good food. We want to pass it along. Come on. Isn't it funny, with food we do, as hungry as we are, if we really like, if we really like the food, we want to tell somebody about it. You know, you may eat all of it that day, but you're going to tell somebody about it to bring them next time. Hello. <laughs> but see, our relationship with Jesus suffers from our own sinful inclinations. But here tonight, church, let me just encourage you that God is so good that we need to start changing our thoughts toward his goodness and aiming everything that is in our days to praising him and thanking him with a heart desirous of pleasing him. Let's stand up to our feet tonight. You know, even during Christmas time, you know, some of us have been raised in homes where Santa is a thing. You know, and I remember watching videos and maybe some friends of mine that they'll be thanking Santa <laughs> for a gift. For those of you who think Santa is real, let me just tell you the truth of God's word. God is greater than Santa. And as children, we would give praise to like Santa would think, yay, Santa, he brought me gifts. And the parents are there just like, hey, well, yeah. So I don't know about you. If I was a parent, I'd be like, there ain't no Santa. I did this. I got you the gift. <laughs> I paid for this. Like, this is for real. Like, I love you. I want to let you know that I love you because I did that, right? See, God loves you so much. Those in this room that are called by his name that can respond because of his grace, God loves you so much that he clearly exposes how good he is in his word. And as soon as we open our hearts and our thoughts and our minds to him, we start seeing how good he is. And let me tell you, let me tell you this. Some of us probably have never tasted his goodness and been so open to it that you're still living a life ungrateful. And some of us have been grateful for certain things, but let me challenge you. Let's take that gratitude higher tonight. Let our attitude, attitude be full of gratitude tonight, where we're like literally, man, thank you, God, for this night. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my food. Thank you for my house, my apartment. Thank you for my parents, my mom, my grandma. Thank you for the pastor. Thank you for the, the leadership. Thank you for Cyrus. Thank you for that, we're, that, we, that you can sleep in a bed tonight. There's a meme and there's an image that is all around online that says, imagine if you would wake up to everything that you thank God for the night before. Imagine if you woke up 
to everything you thanked God for the night before. What does that mean? If you didn't thank God for anything the day before, you'd wake up with nothing. And I really love that because it really paints the picture of like, wait a minute, and it pushes us to say, wait a minute, what do I thank God for? Because we're complaining. We complain half the time. Why this? Why that? Why is this happening? Mom, why? Dad, why? Boss, why? And you don't tell him, but you're thinking, boss, why? Pastor, why? Husband, why? Why, why, why? But we're not approaching it with gratitude. We're not approaching the situations in that way. So tonight, where you are, for those of you who are serious about your relationship with God, for those of you who are serious about taking your walk to the next level, gratitude is key. It's a key component to your growth and how you see, how you see your direction. It's a key component to your growth as an individual and us as a church, World Renegade Church, specifically, I want to speak to you. If we're not thankful for what we have now, we're going to stay stunted in our hearts, in our growth, in our minds, because we're going to always be wanting more. We're going to always be wanting, I want this, I want that. And there's nothing wrong with desiring to excel and to de desire to see more, but when your focus is not gratitude and thankfulness, and it's just complaining and wondering, and we're stunted. We're stopping our growth. So tonight when I count to three, I want you to pray in your seat where you are. Your words, not my words that I tell you, your words. Because there's things that we have not thanked God for lately. What has God done for you? You're breathing today. I can see you with my eyes. What has God done for you? You're fully clothed right now. You came in. Nobody, nobody that I could smell came in with a foul smell because they haven't showered for months. There's so many little things that are big things when you worship God in our thankfulness. So many little things that are big things. So when I count to three, I want you to pray to the Lord. It may be a prayer of repentance. That means changing your thoughts, changing your mind on how to be thankful and to stop complaining for everything around you and to give God thanks. Some of you need to pray in the sense of, man, David looked to God for everything around him. I want that heart where I'm just like, God allowed me to do this. God made this happen. God did this. And, of course, it has to line up to his word. And, of course, the more you know of his word, the more blessed you get, the more good you know he is. But if you don't know his word, too, you'll be led by your own emotions. So let me challenge you tonight to be thankful for what you do know and for what you do have. And everything that's been causing you to complain lately, I want you to quench that. That means I want you to shut that up. The devourer will say, you're, you're not where you're supposed to be, or, or, or you could be better, or this was bad, or you're in the wrong place. I want you to just be thankful tonight. Let us enter and exit even this, this time of worship with gratitude, with gratitude. When I count to three, just begin praying. I know some of you uh, uh, maybe don't know how to pray out loud. Let me encourage you. Pray out loud with all of your might, with all of your heart, because I think he's worth it. I think he's more worth, and he's more valuable than what you think of yourself because he thinks highly of you. So when I count to three, I want you to raise your voice and thank him. If you don't know what to say, just begin thanking him. If you need to repent, just begin saying, Lord, I, tonight I make a decision to change my mind and my thoughts. I've been not giving you thanks for everything. I've been complaining. I've been pointing fingers and blaming others. But I haven't been thanking you for what I do have and what I do have access to. So when I count to three, begin praying. One, two, three. Come on.
Lord, we thank you that you can satisfy completely. We thank you, God, that you bring full spiritual and natural rest. Lord, we thank you because you lead us when we're willing to follow. Lord, we thank you that you restore us. You fix us when we're messed up, God. Lord, we thank you that you make us holy and we can be holy on our own no matter what we do. God, we thank you you've invested into us. God, we thank you because you've caused, caused us to walk fearless, Lord. We thank you, God, because you've chosen us to stand out, Lord God, and you take care of the enemies before us. Lord, we thank you, God, that you cause us to be blessings to people. Lord, we thank you, God, that you give us blessings. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, God, and your mercy that follows us. Thank you for your mercy and your goodness that follows us. Thank you for your mercy and your goodness that follows us. God, we, we just give you back. We give you back all the credit, God. Lord, we take the credit off of our names right now. We take the credit off of our names. We take the credit off, Lord. We give you the glory. We give you the thanks. If that's you, I want you to lift your hands. If that's you, listen, I'm not, it's, it's, if, if it's you that says, God, you're worthy of all my praise. You're worthy of all my days. If that's you, then let's lift our hands and worship him. But with a different mindset, one that says, I'm thankful. I'm thankful about what you've done. I'm thankful for what you're going to do. I'm thankful even in the midst of the uncertainty. I'm thankful, Lord God. Even in the midst of the pain, I'm thankful, Lord Jesus. Even in the midst, Lord God, of the fear in some way, shape, or form, we pray the thankfulness and the gratitude would trump the mouth of the enemy, would trump every thought that would raise itself up of, of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Jesus, we give you the thanks because you've called us to be victorious. We don't have to continue living as losers. We don't have to continue living, losing, but that we would continue going from glory to glory. As your word says, God, that your will, Lord, be to prosper us as we walk in, Lord God, the direction that is being led by our gratitude. God, we can't go nowhere without being thankful. We can't go nowhere without being thankful. We can't move forward without being thankful. We can't heal, we can't grow, we can't have power, we can't have full sufficiency in you without being thankful, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. If there's no other words you have, man, just thank you. Thank you. This may be very natural to some of you, but for some of you it's not. But I want you, I want to even go a little further. Why don't you thank God for your family members you haven't seen in a while? That if they were to die, you would definitely be broken over that. Why don't you thank God that they're still alive? And let's begin to thank God in a way that says, God, I thank you for my grandmother. I thank you for my father and mother. Lord, and you know what happens when you start thanking God for people? You want to be good to them. You want to be good to them. You don't want to neglect them. You want to love on them. You want to spend time with them because you're thankful for them. But if you don't think about them and thank God for them, you'll leave them alone. And they're going to die one day and you're going to have regrets saying, I never hung out with them. I didn't see grandma. I didn't see parents. Whatever it is, let's just give God thanks for these people. Come on. Give God thanks even for your annoying little family member. Hello. Give God thanks for your son, for your daughter. Give God thanks for your wife, for your husband. Give God thanks for these people. Lord, we give you thanks, God, for allowing us to spend time with these people on earth in this decade, in this time, in this amount of decades. In Jesus' name, we thank you. God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. This is what we're going to do to close this prayer tonight. I want you to look at somebody and just tell them, I'm thankful for you. Come on, look at somebody and say, I'm thankful for you. Come on, look them in the eyes. Don't be awkward. Look them in the eyes and say, I'm thankful for you. Come on, and when you I see some people hugging each other. Come on, that's a good thing. Give them a hug. Give them a high five. I want you to sit down after that just for a few more minutes. Hallelujah. Man, we got to be thankful. We've got to be. It changes our outlook. It changes everything. It changes everything.
There's a little bit of thanks. Come on, take your seat real quick tonight. We're about to leave here tonight. And we're going to leave in excitement. Amen? Amen. Uh, let me say that again. We going to leave in excitement. Excitement. See, we all, you, this is the thing. Let me, be, because, you know, this is the, this is the thing. <laughs> Man, we can hear the word of God, and you know, it'll be about a different plethora of topics. One of them could be God's wrath. Who knows? But if that wrath story doesn't lead you to thankfulness and gratitude and excitement afterwards, then there's an issue. We've got to be pumped up and excited because people need to see and know where you came from was something special. Yes. Come on. Some of y'all leave church bored. I, I know some of y'all I'll probably never see again. Hello. But don't leave church bored. <laughs> leave church excited. Unless your church is boring, pray for it, work at it, do what you got to do. Amen? Amen? We don't stay boring here. That's a sin. It's a sin. When people who are bored are boring people. Hello. I'm bored at church because you're boring. <laughs> Hello. Come on, so a creative person will look at the pastor and say, you know what, the message was kind of boring, but you know what I pictured? I pictured everything he was saying, and I was giving him a, a visual illustration in my mind. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Strange. Don't be a mystic. So <laughs> I'm pumped up because I want to live in a way that says, God, I'm thankful to you for everything. Everything. Every, I'm thankful. I wake up in the morning next to my wife. I'm like, yeah, thankful. I wake up and I look in my closet with a whole bunch of vintage items and things I paid for, like cheap, two, three dollars that other people paid two, three hundred for. I look at it, I say, thankful. <laughs> for real. I want you to know that when you wake up in the morning, feeling blessed. Come on, that's a, that's a lyric in one of my new songs. I wake up in the morning, feeling blessed. Come on. Now I know that I don't live for death. A lot to do, but ain't no time for stress. I got God, so I got confidence. So I, I get excited. When I think about what God has done for me, I feel like we need a band here. When I think about, the, you know, and what he's done for me, I will, be, come on, somebody. Y'all don't even know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. no. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. One day we're going to have that. I'm thankful that we don't have a band yet because it would have saved me some headaches. Hello. <laughs> come on, the worship team and the worship leaders are the most headache le people of the whole thing. Hello. I'll be honest with you. I was a part of that. I was a worship leader for like seven years. So I was a big headache because I made people cry. I made the worship leader cry several times because I was all being hard. I'm like, that's not the note. <laughs> I'm like, you ain't even worshiping God. <laughs> Straight up. I, you know, I was me. I was like, why are, you guys, why are you telling us to raise our hands in intervals of five minutes? Hello, somebody. <laughs> big churches do that. They make worship leaders lift their hands a certain amount of times. That's another story. Not every church, just some that I've seen. <laughs> so, so this is the thing. <laughs> this is the thing. I'm excited that somebody don't got to tell me to worship. I just want to worship because I'm excited. I'm like, Lord, you saved me. You've done so much for me, so I will live my life in gratitude, changing my attitude to gratitude with everything I do. Riding in your car, putting in gas, thankful for the gas, pump it. Hello, thankful for the gas, pump it. Raise the volume of your music in your car, thankful. Hello. You, you put the CD in, because some of you are old school. It's thankful on the CD. <laughs> the Bluetooth with the aux cord, thankful, because I get to hear music now. Some of you are hearing worship music even, even better. Amen. It, it cleanses you. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Listen, without further ado, uh, I want to just quickly announce that on November 25th, we've got an amazing outreach here. And that is we're reaching out to Chicago high schools all around Chicago. It's called Chicago's Next. It's going to be on a Friday night. And we're going to have people in this building that do not know God, that have never been to church and or don't go to church at all, maybe know of it. That's about it. And they're all going to come here, rap songs, because it's a rap outreach. So that means these it's all for high school students, by the way. If you're still in high school and you're in Chicago, they come on stage, they rap their song, they cut out all the F words and B words and all the twerking and all that stuff, and, and they minimize the twerk level to one, you know, that kind of thing. You know, they don't bring the, 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 the you, know, sh you know, whatever. They don't bring somebody on stage to dance. They don't do that. They keep it to a, min to a very minimum. We don't look at them crazy if something slips. We love on them. That's what it is. That's why they're here. We're bringing people in from all over. We did this already. This is the second one. And we're going to have them up here, rap their songs, bless them, give them a green room experience that they were like, so blown away by last time. We gave them bags and goodies. And when I go to green rooms and I perform at concert or you know places all over the nation, they hook me up in the green room. You know, you just open the green room. They got
got, what do you want, sir? Anything for you? Red Bulls, chips, nuts. If I said, uh, uh, take away all the green M&Ms, they would take away all the green M&Ms. They really would. That's a real thing, by the way. And so uh, we want to give them that. Amen? You know why? Because we just want to love on people. And we want to love on you young people that are a little crazy sometimes and hard to love. Amen? I'll be honest with you. Hello. Uh, so I thank God for, for, for teenagers, but you know what? I'm thankful that I'm not a teenager anymore. Hello. You know what's awesome when you come out of being a teenager? Ooh, you become, you become another person. You become smart. You become beautiful. You become loyal. You become faithful. De DJ Cali, that's who said that. So November 25th, can someone say November 25th? And I'm just messing with you guys. November 25th. Not only that, November 25th is also the release of my new album, Exposition. D this is, okay, this is the thing about this. And I always forget, this is the first time. I was just on tour for two weeks, and I, didn't, I barely said this on stage. It was so weird. I didn't say nothing of why I was there. Because the whole point was, obviously, ministry is the umbrella. But I wanted to at least tell people and get them excited for the new album. But I kept forgetting. <laughs> now I remember. <laughs> so November 25th. After Chicago's next, we're going to have a, a listening party here because the album's going to drop uh, that night, uh, which is Black Friday. That's the day. So after Thanksgiving, you get your fill, and then you come here and get a rap concert fill. And then we have a little listening party at the end, after party kind of thing. And we're going to listen through the album, 17 tracks. By the way, for those of you who don't know, I had no cent to put into the album. I had no dime because someone say no dime. We live in by faith, y'all, if you didn't notice. If you didn't know, let me tell you. We live in by faith, me and my wife, 100% faith, like literally faith. Like, well, how do you know? How do you live? God. <laughs> so now you know why I'm always thankful, right? Because there's no, there's nothing else to look, to, you know, I can't like look to somebody to give me a check. It's literally just God just blessing me. What does that mean? People come out of nowhere. Hey, here's this. Here's that. Hey, I just, I just felt the Lord tell me to give you a laptop and he just buy me a brand new laptop for $3,000 at the Mac store. <laughs> This is because of faith. That's my, that's the faith. I didn't do that my own. This is literally the, just faith. That's what it is. But it's being faithful where God has me. Amen? Be and I'm saying this because I want the same thing for you. I want the same thing for you to just live in such a vigorous faith that, man, all around you things are happening. Because God is, he's pushing you. He's making it happen. Amen? So anyway, zero dollars to put into the album. I was going to do it all myself, which is fine. It would have been all right. It would have been decent. You probably would have noticed the difference. But... Somebody drove all the way from Atlanta here, and I didn't know they were going to do this. We were just going to meet up because he said it was something about a music video. And then he says, hey, man, I want to invest $10,000 into your album. <laughs> he literally came to my office here and told me I'm going to invest $10,000 into your album. Long story short, he is now the, the COO of my record label that I own now. <laughs> okay, so now there's a record label. I'm a CEO, and we, we have a CFO as well. Rich Hernandez, for, for those of you who don't know him or ever met him, <laughs> Rich Hernandez is a part of that. Um, so I'm, I'm super excited. All this stuff is going on, and this is the, this is the thing. M Renegades Never Die, uh, my last album, was charting on the Billboard charts, right? Billboard contacted me, and uh, I ended up on the secular charts, like the, the worldly music charts, like the next to Drake charts, next to Young Thug charts, you know, next to designer. I mean, I don't know who else is a rapper these days. Little Twain, I'm not too sure. So, <laughs> and I was on the Christian charts. And it's funny because I was higher in the worldly charts and lower in the Christian, but I it was still mad Christian. It was so weird. But it's all good. It's because it's such a big, CCM is a huge market. So anyway, I'm believing God for even greater for this album, being fully independent. Right? Totally independent. Uh, are doing our own thing, and so I'm excited. The record label is World Renegade Music. So we're World Renegade Church here on Saturday nights here in Chicago, and the record label is World Renegade Music. Because my desire is that we will put out worship albums too. Uh, I also have worship songs that I'm storing up that I'm going to come out maybe, maybe uh, when I'm 35. Who knows? So that's 20 years from now. Amen. <laughs> I'm still 29. I'll be 30 soon, but... When I'm 30 in February, five years from that, worship album. Hello. 
So I'm excited about that, and I'm excited about what God's going to do here with worship team and music and all that. We don't know what we're going to do, but we're thankful for where God has us right here. So I wanted to leave you with that. Greet somebody on the way out. We're here every Saturday night until next year. We're, we're working on moving up our day, and we're also here every Tuesday night for prayer for one hour, 7.30, 8.30, and the women of Audacity meet on Thursday nights. Can we make some noise one more time for Cyrus, who is here from Atlanta? Listen, if you support him, he's got some shirts back there. He's got some, uh, is this some CDs too? He's got some CDs. He's got some shirts or sweaters. He's got some long sleeve shirts back there. Hook him up and support his ministry. Amen? I love you all very much, and let's meet each other. If I don't know you, I'll see you soon.